Hey, guys. Steven, welcome to the show. Hey, guys, this is Steven. My name is Steven Hans. I'm a senior solutions architect, and I specialize in in-memory databases, namely Elastic Cache and Memory DB. These are some of the offerings that we have for our customers that would help with their workloads. So nice to join your show. Oh, yeah, thanks, thanks. for welcome. Hey, Steven, like we said before, this is a live show. We're going to hopefully we have some folks asking some questions as we start to talk about memory DP. We start talking about Redis OSS or, or Elastic Cache. So I, I might jump in here and just ask you random questions. So bear with me as they roll in. Hey, that's a reminder to the folks in the audience. Where are you coming from? What do you know about this uh, topic? And what do you want to know about this topic? Uh, but Steven, before we get into what Valky is and, and some of the updates that you've had there. Uh, let's take a few steps back. What is Elastic Cache? What are the what are some common use cases that folks might use these types of services for? Sure, yes, very good question. So Elastic Cache is name of the service. It's one of the services that we offer that actually offers a number of engines and a number of uh, uh, compute engines, if you could think of it, to help boost your various database performances or solve some really thorny little problems that are very much uh, performance related. So Elastic Cache, up till about a week ago, offered two different compute engines. One was designed to run compatible with the Redis OSS engine, and another one was compatible with the Memcached engine. And as of earlier this week, now we're also compatible with the Valky compute engine. So now when you create an Elastic Cache service, you could pick the compute engine that best fits your needs. So now we have three different engines. And of course, as I said, it could help with a number of solutions. Often it's used as an accelerator to an existing source of truth. So you have a source of truth of data, whether in a database, even in a flat file, or in S3, that you need to get to that data fast. You want to keep it in a cache. Elastic Cache should help with those workloads. Yeah, that's right. I mean, so I've, I've, I've had varying experiences with different caching systems throughout my career as a software developer. And um, Redis OSS seemed to be the, the, the dominant um, engine for, for a while, at least when I started my career. And the idea for us was always, you've got cold storage that could be in the, the database somewhere or in a server somewhere. And that's going to take some time to get access to that data, get it over the wire and into your browser. Uh, but there are some uh, amounts of data that you want closer, you want it live, you want it hot, you want it warmed up and ready to go at, immediately upon request. And that's where we might use a caching system like Elastic Cache to say, hey, I want this request. And the system says, hey, I'm already aware of that based on these parameters and based on these things. Let me give, I don't have to go back to the database to get it again. Let me just quickly serve that it's already warmed up and ready to go. Uh, is that a good way to think about it? Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. That uh, if you could think about it, Todd, uh, the differentiating factor in the past was uh, capacity and outage. Well, that's not an issue anymore. Cloud computing has certainly solved that. We have no capacity issues, and outage uh, is really, really good. Elastic Cache offers four nines availability with multi-AZ availability, automatic failover, AZ stats for multiple availability zones within a region. So it's a redundant service. And and absolutely, it's, it's performance is now the name of the game. As I said, in the past, might have been capacity or availability, now is performance. If you have an application or website that is slow, in many cases, it's going to alienate your customers. So you want to access that data fast. So going to your database and having that long round trip every time is going to add up, especially in today's age where we have a lot of mobile applications, burst of demands, flash sales. You want to access your data, your customer's data, whether it's a session information or just a simple leaderboard for your gaming. It's often used in gaming to represent leaderboards. Then you can get to that data and represent proper ranking for your customers in real time, whether you have 100 or 100,000 customers. That's the use case. So it's interesting you mentioned that, uh, Stephen. Earlier, I was uh, earlier this week. I spoke with a customer that you know they did the typical thing on premises because that, that's what you did back in the, the data center days. They went massively scaled horizontally, over provision for only a handful of key days through the year. But when it hit, it had to be right. There had to be availability, had to be resilience, had to be capacity. And once they got to that point where they were exhausting uh, semaphore, CPU, RAM, uh, IOPS, it, it just became very apparent that throwing everything into the database, while it may have been okay when it was smaller and more simple, you get to a maturation uh, level and a point of saturation where you just can't keep throwing hardware at the problem anymore. So this is exactly what got me to look at Redis OSS. Back in the day, much like Todd, uh, when I was getting going with this, because we were, you know, having that 
perpetual fight with the DBA to pull the logs out, but we want them fast, but we want to keep the top queries here. We're not going to tear at the storage. Over time, it just made things better, faster, leaner, smarter, so that they can get to that level of availability that you mentioned. But the nice thing here is, um, can you elaborate on Elastic, um, Elastic Cash and these different services being managed and what that means for the customers? Absolutely. Uh, very good. Very good. Thank you for asking that. Uh, so as I said, Elastic Cash is a managed service similar to many other managed services within AWS, i.e. we manage the hardware and the software for you. I mean, you select the version of the software that you want, but we, we, we select the hardware for you, prepare it for you. You can select the instant size and uh, let me get to that in a second. So you actually have two options in Elastic Cash. As we, we, we launched this late last year, we have a, a traditional one, an instance-based Elastic Cash where you provision the hardware. We provision it for you, but you select the type of hardware. And we install the software for you and we monitor it for you, we secure it for you, we patch it for you, we back it up for you. So this is called the provisioned offering of Elastic Cash, okay. where you have lots of tuning options. You can really dial it in to work very specifically for your workload. Now, this is good if you have a predictable workload and a steady predictable workload. On the other hand, we listen to our customers and many of our customers have workloads that are not necessarily predictable or even if they're predictable, they're not steady. So they constantly had to adjust these dials to get it just right. So for that, last year we introduced Elastic Cash Serverless. Mm -hmm. Elastic Cash Serverless is a purely pay-as-you-go consumption-based service where you don't have to commit to X amount of hardware and you just basically press a button and in about a minute you have a cache with all the best options turned on running for you. It's always secured. You can actually can you turn off security. It's always the best high availability turned on for you with two additional availability zones there for you running. So you get the best of both worlds and you only pay for what you need. So these are kind of like the offerings. So in the past, again, you could run this on your own. Sure you can, right? It's OSS, but it's, you know, you have to patch it yourself. You have to download it. You have to secure it. And high availability is not trivial to be configured. That's the advantage of running Elastic Cache. You don't have to do any of that. That's yeah, awesome. a game changer. I, I, not me wanting to focus on building the software, not focus on what it runs on, uh, really changes things. And that's one of the things that drew me to cloud early in my career was like, hey, I don't have to set all this stuff up, all these managed. And it seems like AWS is is becoming more and more managed, and that is super helpful uh, for people like me. Hey, Stephen, we have our first question in the chat already, and I want to make sure I get to it before we get too far along into the conversation. So we're talking about Val Key. Uh, and you mentioned men cached. Uh, there's Vanguard Space asked the question: Any interest in making Valky data structures multi-threaded like men cached does? Oh. So, okay, so that's that's uh, the, the two offerings are are, are are night and day different. Men cached it is multi-threaded, but it only supports a single data type. On the other hand, the the Valky engine. I'll get to that in a minute, does support multiple data types. It supports 11 built-in data types that you can use it really to your advantage instead of just a single string. However, uh, Valky is going to be multi-threaded. Now, version 7.2.5 that was released that we are running on right now mm -hmm. does not support the full scale of multi-threading, the open source version of it, but version 8, the open source will support the multi-threading as far as IO is concerned. So what this means that the, the Valky compute engine is going to do only the compute work and the additional CPU cores are going to run the IO threads, meaning that it will receive the packets, they will decrypt it if they have to, of course, if encryption is enabled, certificate mm -hmm. encryption, decrypt it, validate the command, and queue it up for the execution engine so that the execution engine will all what to do just to execute the command. This is the result of our observation that we saw that most of the time the execution engine spent its time waiting on network interrupts or waiting for calls that when the TCP IP network is ready to do work. Awesome. So now this is out, outsourced to worker threads. Great. Um, understand you got a demo. would love to see what that looks yes. like. Now talk us through what you're going to be doing and Absolutely. Uh, hopefully the audience can throw some curveballs at us and see what we can. So I'm going to look at my, I'm going to look at my second monitor here on the side. So uh, we have updated the, the console. Now you can see that Valky is another option here before we just had man cached and the Redis OSS. Now we have Valky. So the first, uh, actually I'm going to have two demos. The first demo, I'm going to show you how easy it is to convert or migrate an existing cluster to uh, the Valky engine. So this is currently one that is running on the Redis engine. 
and Redis OSS engine. And all what I have to do, click modify and uh, change the engine to the Valky and just kick it off. So it's going to preview the change that the currently we use the Redis OSS engine. And now we're going to switch to the Valky engine and save the changes. So this is going to tell you how easy it is to convert to the console. Now, okay. in the second demo, by the way, go ahead. No, 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 I'm just kind of amazed that it was just click, click, click. <laughs> it's, it's, it's a click. Yeah, it's one click away. By the way, this is a trick. If you ever need to keep your console alive, just uh, execute the top command, keeps your console alive. So this uh, second one, it's, it's a, a, a demo where I connect to a database and to Elastic Cache. I connect to both services to boost the performance of SQL commands. So uh, what I'm going to do, I'm going to export the endpoint. So this is connecting to the to the engine that is using the currently is using the Redis OSS engine, mm -hmm. and I'm going to run my my little application here. So what this application does is going to simulate 100 random commands, and if the output of those commands is in the cache, is going to respond from the cache. If it's not, it's going to go from the database. Kind of like uh, like uh, what Todd was talking about, how to accelerate mm -hmm. the database workload. So let's execute 100 commands now. Of course, this ran really fast because the data was in the cache. So we can see it with 100 reads. We didn't do any writes because we just uh, tested the reads and it was working really fast. So next, what I'm going to do, I'm going to switch the endpoint to a migrated database. And uh, this one is going to use the Valky engine. So you're going to see that the same application requires absolutely no code change if you were to switch over to it. Okay. So I changed the endpoint. And I'm going to run the same application, the same command, 100 queries. Let's see how it runs. There you go. It executed. It ran perfectly fine. Now you can see that in this case only had five cache hits because this is a new Valky engine. It didn't have the data in it yet. So it had to go to the database for some of the queries. But those that had to come out of the cache performed similarly. The performance is similar. So there's no loss in performance. And I could execute it again and again without any application changes. So that's the beauty of it, that A, if you want to migrate, you can just one click away to migrate. And B, if you have concerns about your existing application, you just have to change the endpoint if that's the case. No code changes are required. I will switch back to my uh, other console to see if the migration has completed. Not yet, it's still running. So we we'll to come back to this in a minute. It takes about four or five minutes to switch over. So, Stephen, with the, the ability to kind of switch the engine like that that quickly, are are you saying that the APIs that we use to interact with Elastic Cache, say my app is already integrated into Elastic Cache and I'm using Redis OSS as my engine, do I have to change anything on my application side to support the new Valky uh, engine? Or are those commands, those APIs, are they going to be the same? or or they are They are the same. The APIs are the same. It's a drop-in replacement. Absolutely. Cool. So I don't have to change anything on the front end of my application. I could, um, same cache busting techniques, the same cache querying that I would normally use uh, with Elastic Cache. I just, all I have to do is go in and switch the engine, do a migration, and I'm up and running with Valky. Absolutely. Yes. That's pretty cool. <laughs> Yeah, that's yeah, that's the beauty and, of and managed. There's, there's, there's more to right it here. Can you can you imagine what it would have what it would take if you were running this on your own hardware, your own stack, your own what you would have to do to replace uh, an engine like this? Yeah, I know, I know exactly what it's like. I had to do it many times back in the day. Um, and there's actually a, there's some good questions coming through in the in the chat. Um, first one I wanted wanted uh, to pull up if we can the one from Not Viper. How is this something you'd use in the real world? Um, Historically, as a old sysadmin engineer architect, devs are always wanting to leverage the new, the newest and most recent set of tools and goodies. So that's issue number one. Issue number two, being able to tell the go back and tell the business, hey, we want to make use of this new fork. There may be cost and performance gain settings. We may be able to reinvest time back into the business. That's a very real use case. And in my time working with partners, they estimate anywhere between 1.4 million dollars to 2.2 million dollars of lost time and productivity chasing gremlins on a system that they don't really understand or doesn't is not able to scale up and help them meet their needs and demand um truthfully this is probably going to be one of the more common use cases where yeah. folks are wanting to go and jump in on it because this is solving a very critical problem to the business more than the tech side 
Steven, maybe you can correct me if I'm wrong, at least from my developer years, one of the the most common reasons we would always use a caching system like this was to store session information. And a mm-hmm. session is something you initialize when you log into a system. Say you're logging into some app on a web, web application. You're going to get a session that describes that login event. You might have cached some credentials. You might have cached uh, who you are, uh, maybe some other attributes about who you, uh, who you are as you're interacting with the website. And... Um, now, let's say if I click away from this application, I want to come back. I want that same experience to be lightning quick. I don't want to have to go load all of these attributes from the database and re- reconfigure a session or a profile about who I am as I'm interacting with that application. So I want that to be stored into the cache so I can immediately pick up where I left off and have this you know quick experience, this user experience that doesn't sit and have me spinning as I collect some of that stuff. Now, I want that hit to take like happen initially, but then after that, I don't want. So for me... Caching systems like this were always huge when managing session uh, information. Hopefully, that answers your question, Stephen. Maybe you've got another common uh, real. No, no, you're absolutely, you're absolutely uh, dead on. So, what is happening here? Uh, in the past few years, a decade or so, uh, application development has gotten very good at scaling applications. Uh, this is the result of introducing uh, serverless technologies, Kubernetes containers. However, database technology. While it has evolved, but specifically the traditional relational database technology has not much. So to keep up with that demand, you you have the option to completely rewrite your application and your database to migrate the database to a NoSQL database, which is a huge undertaking, Mm -hmm. or keep your database as is and add a caching service in front of it. So all of the other applications could stay as they are. but it gets even better than that. As absolutely said, that uh, sure you could change your device, you could change your location, you still have your session information. But Amazon is also known for always innovating and passing on those innovations and savings to to our customers. We've done this many many times. Valky is part of that. Actually, if you were to migrate your workloads to the Valky compute engine, you would realize significant cost savings, which we're going to pass on to our customers. So, right now. It's actually a 20% cost savings on an instance based. So if, if you were to use the same workload, run it on a Valky engine, your cost is going to go down by 20%. Damn. It's, it's part of that innovation. The whole reason we have a show here on Friday is that innovation happens so fast. And we want to make sure customers are aware of that by hosting a show like this, getting the word out onto Twitch. Um, Steven, as part of this uh, this demo, do you got anything else you want to show us? Or or if not, where can customers go to learn more about Valky and some of the benefits that they might experience using switching to Valky? So they, they can go to our, our splash page uh, of aws.com uh, slash uh, Elastic Cash. They have that website. And of course, we have uh, all sorts of presence in many other locations. Uh, GitHub, we have a lot of good uh, examples and codes on GitHub. And uh, of course, we're going to be there at reInvent. We're going to show some new capabilities, scaling, uh, high availability that we have introduced. Uh, there's a lot of code that actually we donate to the open source community. This is not just developed in vacuum within AWS. We are very much in lockstep with the open source community and work with them. Um, so yes, absolutely. And a similar savings and similar capabilities also apply to the memcache. Uh, engine where that that is also is part of our our family on the serverless architecture, and uh, the other one is uh, memory DB. Memory DB also offers the same engine. The Valky engine is available on memory DB, and there are significant savings there as well. Now you know that memory DB is only offered in in an instance base; is not offered as a serverless. But there is a significant savings there on the instance base. The savings are thirty percent. And we have reduced uh, some other uh, costs required uh, related to the, the storage cost. The storage cost went down by 80%. So uh, plenty of opportunity for everybody. Uh, plenty of new services out there. Uh, let us know if you need any uh, help with your migration. We are here to help. Cool. Steven, hey, thanks for coming on and showing us uh, a little bit about Valky. Uh, I'm sure we'll have those links available in the chat and after the mm-hmm. show. Uh, hey, I mean, sounds really cool. Valky cost benefits, huge thing, uh, lots of different opportunity to do some, maybe some new workloads. So go check that out. Uh, I think that's all the time we have for Steven. Steven, have a great weekend and stay safe in Florida. Absolutely. Take care, guys. Bye-bye.